Right guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did my D&D &D nails. So these D&D &D nails, I did, I'll show you them all the way from scratch. So I've put down my um, clear layer on my forms, etc. Done my prep, whatever, and I'm just coming in with my colours now. So this is over a really, really thin clear layer. So for this first stage, I'm just trying to get sort of a background colour for everything. I wanted some nice texture, so I went ahead and did some kind of like marbly, swooshy things. Not really making any attempt to marble them just so that they're just kind of like a soft kind of colour blob thing. So yeah, so I did that, I did a few of these, put some glitter in, a couple of ombres, nice and easy. Um, so I'll let you watch these and then I'll come back when we get onto some actual art.
Right, so now they're all capped and filed. Look really cute. I absolutely love this set. <clears throat> they were adorable. So I'm just going to start doing the actual characters now. So this is the Beholder, which is going to be the main focus of this video. This will be a two or three part, maybe. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if you know what a Beholder is. If you're into D&D, obviously you will, but it's basically just a giant floating eyeball with some eyeball tentacles. And it's uh, just like a, a monster, basically. Um, so I'm just, I'm using a reference photo from the, like, tr from the official, like, D&D kind of book, if you like. Um, but I'm changing the colour scheme because they're normally, like, a red or a grey or something like that. So um, my client really wanted to have that sort of, like, pastel look. So we decided to make him turquoise and make him all adorable and cute. But also kind of horrid as well, because that's how we roll. So I'm just basically, this is all acrylic paint at this stage, so I'm basically just laying down nice solid like base colour and then I'm going to come in with all my highlights and lowlights. So I pick a mid-tone basically from the, from the colour that I actually want as my sort of like core colour and then I come back in with my highlights and lowlights to add the definition and show the form a little with my lighting. Um, yeah, at the time I was really happy with this. I'm still pretty happy with it to be fair. I do feel like I've uh, I've been sort of like grinding my art a little bit since since now. So I think if I were to redo it, I could make it absolutely exceptional. Because um, this is actually ages ago that I did this. Um, but yeah, so I, I am so pretty happy with it. I think it came out pretty well for like a fantasy piece. You know, there's there's only so much you can do with a fantasy piece. Like I'm not quite down um, I haven't got down that sort of like working from imagination just yet like I like to have a reference um, you know just for the lighting and things like that like I mean I ca now I am getting slightly better at it but but yeah so I was re really happy with this so I'm just coming in now with some uh, some of these low lights so this is before I did all my colour theory work and stuff like that so there's no particular reason why I've chosen this blue it's just because I thought it was like a nice shadow colour just for no reason basically whereas obviously now I would pick a colour that's complementary or you know it makes it stand out in some way but I was basically just keeping within the same tone more or less and just adding highlights and lowlights from the original colour so yeah so I'll just uh, leave you to watch me add some highlights and lowlights I'll come back when we get onto like slightly different techniques or when we get onto the eye Right, so I'm adding in the iris now. So I'm adding, again, I'm adding the core colour first, the like sort of base medium colour. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add highlights and lowlights. Now with an iris, you've got to remember that it is actually a 3D shape. It is, like the pupil is a hole. It's not a just a black blob. So you've got to bear that in mind. And an iris is, a, is like, it's textured. So you've got to add that texture in. It's underneath like, the the cornea so you can feel like you wouldn't be able to feel the texture but it does still have shadows if that makes sense um because it's still 
captures the light differently to a flat surface because it is actually like the strings of muscle. So I've added in the, the pupil for the hole in the eye. Um, and then I'm going ahead and adding in some of the shadows that would be in between the fibres of the muscle and things like that. Um, and then also generally, um, not, not in real life, like so it is something that happens in real life, but for me, aesthetically, I prefer an iris with like a halo, you know, like a dark ring. So that's what I'm adding in basically and I'm doing highlights and low lights to add the texture of the iris. Um, also some of the fibres can be different colours so you can add in some extra colour and stuff if you want to but just bear in mind all the fibres go from the inside of the iris, so where the pupil is, to the outside where it joins the white of the eye. Also as well bear in mind that the white of your eye is not white. Like obviously on this piece, I've done it quite white. I've got some pink in there and stuff like that, but generally they're actually quite gray. And I, I would think, well, in my opinion, it makes your highlights stick out really well and it adds a lot of life if you don't do your irises white, if you do them slightly muddy or slightly gray um, and, you know, add some shadow because you, you've got to remember that it is actually a sphere, the eyeball, so it does require some shadow like any sphere would. Um, so yeah, so I feel like I was pretty good at eyes at this stage, but because I've done all this extra work, I've been really grinding my art, like no joke, I've been all over YouTube um, and I've just been practicing and assessing and repeating and doing all this. So I feel like that now if I were to redo this piece, like I said before, this eye would be like so realistic, it's not even funny. <laughs> so maybe I will redo it sometime. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've gone, I've gone a bit more towards realism from where I was at this st stage. But I think you have to go through that realism stage to get good at cartoon. Like you can't just do cartoons based on cartoons. You've got to actually know, you've got to know the rules to break the rules, if you know what I mean. So yeah. So again, I'm just doing like random peripheral like shading for no reason. It's just meh. I'm trying to like make the the sides look further back basically. Um, whereas I want the, the centre to look further forward so I've highlighted it, it's kind of just like contour in your makeup, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm at now. Obviously, there's no ambient light or anything like that on this piece, it's a pretty basic thing. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was really happy with it at the time and like I said, I still am to be fair, I like how uh, graphic it is. So I'm just lining the mouth now. Um, what I normally do with mouths, because obviously you're working very, very small, it's very difficult to do like teeth and things. So I generally just like outline where I want the mouth roughly, and then I'll draw the teeth in, not worrying if I'm going outside of that. Just put like a little data background down, slap your teeth in, just pop the end of your brush where you want your teeth to finish, and then press your brush towards the base, and you'll get a nice like triangular shape, you know, for a pointy tooth. So that's what I'm gonna do in a minute. And then if you go outside the lines, just recover it. Just draw the lips back on, basically. It's no drama. It's better to do that than have them not reach. You know what I mean? Or have them like just blobs dangling in somebody's mouth. It's horrible. So yeah. So again, I'm just trying to pop the lip out a little so that it's a physical texture. You know, it's a physical thing, not just a line. I want it to physically feel like it's 3D and it has a, a thickness to it. So I'm just doing that. And then we'll bob these teeth in and just re-block whatever I cover. Eventually. Yeah, when you're highlighting and low lighting, just try and think about form and what you want to drop back and what you want to come forward. And then obviously when you get more advanced, you can start thinking about how, you know, thinking about ambient light and um, like occlusion and stuff like that. Yeah, we're keeping it pretty simple on this one because like I say, I hadn't done a lot of my studies, so. This is basically where I started with my like understanding of light and shadow. Basically, this is some middle school bullshit, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just trying to add a bit of texture with my highlight as well, so make him look a bit like, sort of a, uh, Pocky, I guess, like like he's got texture to his skin. I'm just deepening the shadow under his like little monobrow thing. Adding his little eyelid in. I 
I do a generally hit the camera with my glasses and this is a consistent problem that I've not solved yet so I apologise because there's a lot of videos where that happens, they're coming up. So if it really bugs you, you know, my bad. Yeah, I'm just sort of like doing small strokes to add texture, etc, etc. Basic stuff. I'm just making sure his eyes are nice shape, make sure it's solid. Here we go, teeth, finally. So I'm just putting down the tip of my brush where I want the point of the tooth and then just sort of like pressing it backwards and then pulling up a little just because he's quite long. For the bottom teeth there will be obviously not as much drag because they're a lot smaller. Just kind of putting them in all jointy, an jointy ankle and uh, joint jaunty angles so that they look at like like it's a monster and it's not had like a full orthodontist treatment, you know. It's got a bit it's gotta be a bit dodgy on it. Some badass teeth. So yeah, and then for the bottom ones I was just cheating and just doing them the wrong way around. You can tell the difference. That that's why I flipped over the because it looks loads better if you do it the other way around. But I was being lazy. And then just draw your lip back in. Job done. Nice and easy. It's really funny watching this back after it being so long because it's like watching magic. This must be what it feels like for other people. You're just like, eh, hey, it's just like like a bunch of like little blobs of paint and they actually look like teeth. <laughs> I think I'll come in and do a bit of shading on the teeth in a minute as well because they were a bit like, meow, they were a bit much. I'm trying to give his little tentacles some like form. I decided to do his little, uh, his eyes on the end of his tentacles a bit goofy. I just thought it'd be funny, so they're a bit goggly eyed. Just basically like little googly eyes. <laughs> I wish I'd have had some tiny googly eyes that I put them on. me remembering oh crap there's tentacles on other fingers as well and I've not done all with them. <laughs> I need no bother done this one because I've made a D12 which will I think will be in the next video um, or maybe the third one I don't know but I did a, a D12 uh, sorry a D20 on the nail like in 3D and I tried to do it really tiny but it came out absolutely massive. <laughs> it came out pretty good though I was really happy with it I thought I did a really good job of like rendering the shape because I literally made it out of acrylic it's not like I'm at a mold or anything like I just basically sculpted it um, so I think I did a pretty damn good job to be fair but it was massive so, but I kind of like that anyway it's extra in it it's all drama I'm on my goofy eyes. I didn't bother shading these or anything too tiny. Like, I mean, I could have done, but I won't go for a realistic look, like I say. I might try and redo a DD &D set, but do it like full original art style, you know, like full high fantasy. I think it'd be really cool. I think they'd have to be a bit bigger though. Try and somebody will get long nails. So, yeah, I enjoyed doing this set. It was really funny. I really enjoyed it. I decided to do the tape on it to be a bit more manky and then added some shadow just so, so that they look like they're actually behind the lip. I've got no consistent light source in this image but you know, what else? Sort of slightly above him I guess and in front maybe. I didn't really think about it to be fair. <laughs> add in some pink in those corners just to sort of like give his eyeballs a bit of depth as well or eyeball rather and then just re-blocking where I've touched because it's very very difficult at this scale to not go over your lines if you know what I mean I've given up on all this now trying to keep everything tidy it's not how I roll anymore <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna top coat it, cure it, and then I'm gonna probably top coat it twice actually, I'm not sure. And then I come in with like a hard gel top coat. This is the Nail Nails one. Um, it's mega gloss, but I think they've replaced that now with something else, but it's still the same stuff. They just call it something different. And I'm basically just sort of like, um, like using it, I'm using a dotting tool to like blob it on, if that makes sense. Um, and then curing that. So it's, it's nice and easy. Um, it looks really great. It's a really great technique. It stays on perfect, so there's no problems with it at all. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this part. I'm going to come back and do uh, the other hand and then do the, um, the D20 um, in another video. So if you want to see those, make sure that you subscribe and pop your alerts on. Um, if you could like the video, that'd be great. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.